being the most common inflammatory arthritis. 1% of the population generally have remarkable damage within the first one, two, and three years. So the new recommendation, move quickly, get the diagnosis laid down, and let's get a DMARD on board. It's a systemic autoimmune phenomenon, the etiology is presumed to be a genetic or immunogenetic uh, predisposition, and then you get an environmental antigen. When do you think about it? Young people, 25 to 45. And yet, many of the symptoms are seen in four to six decades. Why damage or elderly onset of rheumatoid arthritis? Peak onset, young people, and then you've got an older population as well. Females are affected three times more commonly than the gentlemen. Distribution pattern. Shoulder, elbow, wrist, the MCPs, PIPs, knee, ankle, and all the MTPs. This is the ACR classification criteria. Anything with a criteria that's not controversial makes for a nice test question. Morning stiffness, an hour, three or more joints, involving hands, joint swelling. Now, get down to the bottom, you need a little more data. Erosions or decalcification on x-ray, rheumatoid nodules present in 25% of patients and a bad prognostic feature. Abnormal serum rheumatoid factor is generally present at some point in the disease greater than 80% of the time. But there's an elderly onset group characterized by abrupt previous subacute presentation. Frequency is equal, men and women, and these are only positive for the rheumatoid factor 50% of the time. Shoulder involvement, non-articular hand edema is common, and you need to distinguish it from other polyarticular presentations, polymyalgia rheumatica, um, psoriasis, many other entities, including a more malignant or aggressive osteoarthritis. The treatment pattern, you want to get it laid down, get the diagnosis, you can use bridge therapy with an NSAID, bridge therapy with a steroid, but what you really need is a disease-modifying agent, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic medication. What you tend to see is, what I've seen throughout the years in terms of exam questions, they're going to focus on methotrexate and plaquenil. Methotrexate and plaquenil. So methotrexate is the center, it's the gold standard. Every other medication is always tested against methotrexate. The wealth of the knowledge in all the studies have methotrexate. Then you get plaquenil and there's lots of other options there. You've got the new biologics. The main thing with rheumatoid arthritis, you've got to figure out, is the patient active? Do they have active synovitis? Therefore, they need a DMAR. Inflammation is damage, damages disability long term. Are they stable? If they're stable, let's slowly think about it, not in the winter, in the spring, summer, we're going to slowly back off. Remission, or they are quiescent, let's get those meds way down. They have significant toxicity. If they are burnt out, they're 75, there's no activity, but they've got chronic damage. They need pain management, not DMARD therapy. So ultimately, we're looking for ACR preliminary criteria for remission or quiescence. No fatigue, morning stiffness less than 15 minutes, no joint pain, tenderness, or pain on motion, no soft tissue, swelling, no periarticular activity, no extra articular, which I've listed there at the bottom, and the ESR needs to be normal for age. Classification of function becomes critical as patients age. What we're hoping for is we keep everyone at class one or class two. They can continue to follow their ACLs. So, ultimately, Four prognostic features for patients include rheumatoid nodules, high rheumatoid factor titer, greater than 20 joints active with synovitis, erosions on x-ray, remember that's damage, irreversible damage, higher ESR, and poor functional status. You need to establish function and disability for your inflammatory arthritis patients. 